The Brownells Do-It-Yourself Smith & Wesson J-Frame Revolver Upgrade Kit includes replacement parts for the grip, springs, and the clip draw, as well as the tools needed to install those parts. And we'll show you how to install these upgrades simply and easily. It makes sense to install all the parts at once, and doing so will only take about 20 minutes. To start with, open the cylinder and make sure the revolver is unloaded. Because you'll be working with compressed springs, it's recommended that you wear safety glasses. With the appropriate bits, remove the existing grips and the side plate screws. Once the side plate screws are removed, turn the revolver so the side plate is facing down. With the handle of the driver, give the frame a couple of hard taps on the opposite side. This will get the side plate to come out without prying under it. Close the cylinder and either cock your empty revolver to single action or stage your double action trigger so you can insert a paper clip into the mainspring guide rod hole. Remove your mainspring assembly and hammer block and set them aside. Now on Smith & Wesson revolvers, the rebound slide is powered by a spring. The function of the rebound slide is to push the trigger back into the ready position after the trigger is pulled. It resets the action for the next shot. The energy for this operation is provided by a strong spring, which resides inside of the rebound slide. The rebound slide sits in the frame just behind the trigger. It's held in place by a post, which extends from the side of the frame. To replace the rebound spring, use the Brownell Smith & Wesson rebound slide tool and remove the rebound slide. The unique shape of the Brownell Smith & Wesson rebound slide tool makes getting the spring in and out a lot easier because one end of the tool captures the spring. Take out the existing rebound slide spring and install one of the kit's 13, 14, or 15 pound rebound springs. After the new spring is installed, you'll function test the action. So try the lightest spring first. If the gun doesn't function properly, then you can always move up to the next weight. Take out the existing hammer spring and install the new reduced power hammer spring. Reinstall the main spring and the side plate, then function test how the two new springs work together. With an unloaded gun, close the cylinder, now squeeze the trigger with a double action pull and hold it to the rear. The cylinder should rotate. The hammer should move through its arc of travel as if the gun was being fired. Now you won't be able to see this if you have a concealed hammer, of course. Before you release the trigger, look in between the rear of the cylinder and the frame. You should see the firing pin protruding. When you release the trigger, the firing pin should move rearward and the hammer should move to the rear about a quarter of an inch. The trigger should move forward and reset itself for the next pull. While pulling the trigger, you shouldn't feel any grinding or roughness to the pull. The workings of the revolver should be smooth, without any hang-ups. Next, repeat the same test, this time utilizing a single action pull if you can with your revolver. Here again, you shouldn't feel any binding or interference of parts. Once the trigger is fully pulled, it should return fully forward on its own. With the new springs installed, now you can install the clip draw. Still with an unloaded firearm, remove the rear side plate screw, but keep the original side plate screw in a safe place if you decide to reinstall it later. Position the clip draw against the frame with the flange tightly up against the frame, and install the replacement screw and washer supplied with the clip draw. Now turn to the grip. The Hogue Mono Grip is a one-piece rubber grip that slides onto the revolver frame from the bottom, requiring no modifications to the firearm. The Mono Grip uses a stirrup device that clips over the existing stock pin or bottom strap of the frame. The stirrup is the key component in the system that adapts the grip to your revolver frame. Spread and snap the U-shaped stirrup over the stock pin and onto the bottom of the revolver's frame. The stirrup hangs on the stock pin and rides solidly on the frame. Then from the bottom, slide the rubber grip itself onto the frame and stirrup. Channels inside the grip should mate with the stock pin. Push the grip onto the grip frame and until the surfaces of the stock pin and grip fully mate. Screw the monogrip grip screw into the nut visible at the bottom of the grip. Turn it until the screw seats, but it doesn't have to be tight, just snug. When you go to the range, run about 20 rounds through the revolver and verify that everything works as it should. Make sure to mix up the types of trigger pulls, if you can, by shooting half with single action and half as double action. 